Gather veterans, it's time to join the fight. The long war begins. This is The Long War. I'm Rob Bear, and joining me once again are my partners in crime, Kenny Boucher, Mike Haswell, and Wyatt Turk. What's up, guys? Yo, Doc, great to be here. Greetings and felicitations. Yo, what's up? So it's, uh, I guess I guess we're kind of in between the 40Ks, but it seems like everybody's still pretty engaged because uh, the orcs is on the way. Ooh, excited. Mm-hmm. Lots of orcs, hopefully. From the looks of it, yeah. I was talking to Kenny about this in tactics. Like I've been following these these release articles. Like, oh, three more days, two more days, and it it seems to me like there's a lot more orcs coming than what they've shown off. Like, pretty big line revamp looks like, which is you know, and I'm sure we could get we could get all sorts of into this, but it might um, be. Uh, fair to say that it's maybe the beta for um, perhaps more revamps for other lines that are just as old, like maybe Eldar, even Guard. Um, Possibly. You know, that'd, that'd be cool. Or maybe not Guard quite as much, but maybe some Guard. Well, actually, they and that was one of the things in the, the preview images was potentially it looked like a great coat with a respirator. What? Oh, Oh shit! Yeah, that was that was it. that was one of the preview images. Was it didn't have the pickle Habra, so it probably wasn't Deathcore. It was probably Steel Legion, which goes along with Return to Armageddon rumors that we heard for a whole bunch of new orcs that fit to build. Yeah, Steel Legion, and also mm. supposedly Salamanders in some way, which we know there's one of the successor chapters fighting um, an Octarius, the Kraken, I think they're called. So, huh. yeah. Could be crazy. Yeah. And is Octarius, that's the thing they're supposed to talk about this Saturday, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm looking also, they it. use the uh, the font that they have for, for Kill Team. Uh, Kill Team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I, I can tell you right, that. right now, I know there's new Kill Team products because I saw them hit the port. That I could I could see it in the description. So oh, cool. that's good because Kill Team, um, not to reopen old wounds. But <laughs> Kill Team does need a revamp because they put those they put the rules for Indominus units in that uh what was it, the Pariah Pariah Nexus box set mm-hmm. uh, for Kill Team, but it but it wasn't a starter. It was just it was just all the new data sheets for all the all the new stuff that was in Indominus. So hopefully they can put out a new kill team you know, 2.0 rule set box set or whatever. I think, I, I, yeah, I think the kill team boxes have always been pretty high interest. I mean, they've always sold out with, when they introduced that new, that new style kind of modular ish terrain mm-hmm. um, that, that came and went, it was done. They never reprinted it. And then they uh, put out a, a second offering with the sector mechanicus train, which still is cool. But a little, uh, it, it was a little as, reduced. It wasn't as yeah. as much stuff in it. And no, I think no galvanic magma vents in there. Yeah, exactly right. Um, but I think I think a lot of folks really like the Rooney look of the what is it, Imperial Sector? I think it's called. Um, yeah. I, I personally do too. Uh, but the Sector Mechanicus stuff still do. Yep. Um, yeah. So should be a high uh, high pass uh, series of previews that we're about to get hit with. We talked a lot about orcs in the pregame show, the after hours, which is what we do before we do this final recording. So if you're listening to this on your car on the way to work, just know an entire additional borderline inappropriate conversation took place for about an hour. (laughs) That it's exclusive, except for other people in chat watching us cross platform right now but uh before we jump into the the show we do have a ceremony here we're gonna roll out to why it's cable wonders oh yeah Uh, all right the fate of the world depends on you successfully debating one of these movies to be the greatest movie of all time which do you choose 
Lethal I mean, Weapon or Die Hard. Oh man! Ooh, that's everybody hard. knows it's Highlander. It won the Academy Award. For yeah, does, no, no, no. They don't want to hear about that. No. They don't want, they to, want hear to hear that. about Lethal Weapon or Die, Die Hard. Like the fate of the world no, depends well, on well, you. It's well crafted. Proving because. that this the movie that you choose is the greatest movie of all time. Which one are you gonna are you gonna go with? It's a good one because most people, it's like that's their jam right there. Like. Oh well, my god, this is I'm gonna really, pick, really hard. I'm gonna pick Die Hard because it's 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 a movie for everybody. It's it's an action movie. It hits all the highs of action movies. I mean everything you want. You got explosions, you got uh you know, physical like ex, ex, what do you call practical it? Um, effects? Practical effect. No, the physical uh physical challenge, like McLean walking across glass, you know, like detective work old fashioned, you know, normal stuff. And then it's even a Christmas movie. Okay. So luckily, it's very, it's, luckily it's we have Mike. Kids. Mike, tell me why Die Hard is the best movie of all time. I don't know that I would go with Die Hard. That's why, that's what I'm debating. Oh, right now. shit. I don't know that I would go with Die Hard. <laughs> oh, shit. Lethal Weapon has such, such a good place in my heart. And don't get me wrong. I love Die Hard. I love Die Hard. But people oh, are, are arguing the, the jingle, you know, Lethal Weapon starts playing Jingle Bell Rock. Yeah, dang, I just um, remember. It's, it's like, it is so hard. They both have a really great villain cast. I mean, it's uh, that's hard to top. Who was the, the villain in the first Die Hard? Um... Snape. It was. It wasn't the Germans or the. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, wasn't that Die Hard too? No, no, I mean, excuse me. Uh, that was Die Hard. It was the Germans. Uh, Lethal Weapon One was it? Lethal was Weapon the- One was uh, Gary Busey, uh, young oh, Gary Busey, um, and uh, I can't remember the. He's a character actor. He played General Hunsaker in. Lethal Everyone Weapon. in chat's going crazy and saying Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman was in Die Hard. That is. Right. Yeah, he was Hans yeah, Gruber. Was Die Hard. I was he like was Hans Gruber. Gruber. Um, but yeah, I mean, you both have iconic characters that oh, you man. you create. Um, man, it is rough because it's both kind of they're both kind of buddy cop movies. Even though Die Hard is remotely a buddy cop movie, because his partner is not in the building with him. Right, he can only talk to him over the radio. Oh, so, Carl Winslow. Yeah, yeah. So it's. It's like, oh my god, this is so rough. Um, I'm gonna go with Die Hard, Mike, so that you have to be Lethal Weapon now to defend a Lethal Weapon dang. franchise. Yeah, but they both spawn franchises, mm-hmm. right? Um, mm. That were very successful up until the last the last couple films. Okay, I'm gonna go with I, I'm gonna go with Lethal Weapon because Richard Donner just died oh. this last week, so I'm going with Lethal Weapon. Um, and you have these characters of Riggs and Murtaugh that from that first lethal weapon, I don't, I don't think we'd had a character quite like Riggs. We had, we had Mm -hmm. the very tropey Murtaugh, right? We had that guy already, the two days from retirement guy, the, you know, I'm getting too old for this guy. Um, but yeah, they bring in the whole conspiracy from the the uh shadow company cia stuff where they were smoking heroin back or smuggling heroin back to the states so they're both kind of like robber movies they're not really heist films although die hard is more of a heist film than lethal weapon is uh but okay i have to okay the here here's here's a trump for for lethal weapon right there is a guy, and I don't know his name, but when I describe him, you will know who I'm talking about. And he's in in the 80s. I the used Asian to hear my friends called him martial arts bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> he was an Asian everything. stuntman who's like half bald. He was in just about every 80s movie. He was a badass. He's a badass. And he is in Lethal Weapon, but I don't think he's in Die Hard. And is it, isn't like Jet Li in Die Hard? Though? He is in Die Hard. He is in Die Hard. No, I think Jet Li is in Die Hard. No, 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 no. no, that, no. that guy's, um, God. He's a stunt man. He's in. I know his like. I, I know his name. Yeah, he's in there. He's one of the. He's one of the thugs. Okay, so basically, oh my gosh, man, this guy was in everything. He, he just doesn't do any everything. like. Kung Fu no, no, no. Shit, but but he's, he, he's in Die Hard. Yeah. So he's basi- torturing Riggs. He's the guy who tortures Riggs. 
Mm-hmm. I think his name is Endo or something like that in, in Lethal Weapon. And, and Riggs is able to take him out through, and they both have that physical thing, right? It's like, because you had Bruce Willis walking through the glass, you have, you have Riggs being able to dislocate Al his shoulder. Long. Um, Al Young? No, Jet Li is in Lethal Weapon 3. He wasn't Lethal Weapon 1. People are saying 4. That doesn't count. It was four, maybe. I don't know. Oh, yeah, this is him. My, Al, my Al cast, Leon. well, basically, you just kind of, like, tied it into my... Because I was going to say Die Hard is dope because it's, like, multiverse theory. I When I watch Die Hard, I, I feel like I'm watching, like, a multiverse film, right? Where I'm just watching the events of, like, the, the one version of Bruce Willis. This is the one. <laughs> where, like, he failed to secure... Every, like, every, he died on every other timeline, and every other verse. And so like, there's the rest of the reason why he's able to succeed is because throughout that project, he's getting stronger and stronger and more invincible and more unlikely to fail. But now that I know that this dude is in both films, I think they're the same universe now, like the same multiverse. <laughs> so does that mean they might, they might conceivably be like, Oh my, well, see, now I want to see that movie where we're like Murtaugh and Riggs have to go to New York <laughs> to solve <laughs> to solve some money laundering drug scheme and they get paired up with <laughs> McLean. Well, he was in, he was in the Scorpion King. He was in the Scorpion King. He was. He's he's uh, like and somebody says, you know, he's the greatest henchman ever and he was. He was like he was in every freaking 80s professionally movie. Professionally a, a henchman on his a henchman. He was IMDb. really really good. <laughs> And I, I forgot that he was in Die Hard. I, I don't know, man. I think I, I will have to go with Lethal Weapon because my gut tells me Lethal Weapon. I love the whole. Yeah, I don't know, man. This is really, really hard. I mean, I know you modeled some of your favorite action scenes in Graveyard Shift after it. it in, in no way at all does Graveyard Shift have anything to do with Lethal Weapon. <laughs> It's like pretty much Lethal Weapon with, <laughs> with, with a vampire. I remember one time you were like, after you wrote the end and the fight scene at the end, and you this is like probably a decade ago now, Mike, right? It is. You hit it's me more up. Than it. It, I wrote it in 2009. Damn, so. dude. Like you called me and you were like, bro, I was up all night writing. I was like, what'd you write? And you're like, I don't know yet. Like, yeah. But I just couldn't stop. And then, like, the next day you called me and you're like, yo, I basically wrote the ending of Lethal Weapon. I <laughs> basically wrote the ending. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'll never forget that conversation. Like, <laughs> Al, Al Leong is the guy's mm-hmm. name. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Man, you need to. You've uh, seen everything. When you, when you get your, uh, your big fat black library card, you definitely need to make like a 40K heist movie. Because we haven't we haven't had we that. We haven't had that really. We need we need like a 40k heist book. Yeah. Or... Gotta get the uh vibranium. I mean gotta get the crew back together, you know. <laughs> With a little help from some old friends. Mm-hmm. Come. All right, well that's a solid would you rather, Wyatt. Thank that you. That was solid. <laughs> Rob, would you like to do some news? I don't know if it's gonna be as good as all that. But I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best here. We're going to give it the college try. <laughs> Rob Bear reporting from the Memorial News Desk. Coming to you right now with breaking news. I'm still here, guys. Yeah. Um, so we do have some uh, new releases from on the GW side of things uh, going on pre-order this Saturday. Um, the second Caradon book, Book of Fire, I think, book two, is going on uh, pre-order for $60. Uh, the Crusade book for, I guess it's primarily about sister stuff from from the looks of it. Um, Ashes to Ashes or something. That's not the actual name. I forgot the actual name. It is called Amidst the Ashes. Uh, will be coming out too for $40. And uh, kind of like very unexpected, but not unwanted. Uh, and, you know, good effort on GW for, for doing this. They're putting out Bellacore this week as a new release. So they're putting Bellacore back out, the plastic one, $140. Um, you might remember he was severely- He only had allocated. 1,200 of them in the, in the country. <laughs> yeah. they uh, There was not a lot of them out there and they promptly went for like 200 plus on secondary markets really Shout quick out. overnight. Shout out, put it back on the market. Um, but why it's, while it's, uh, the reason why even more important is that it has a new release designation this week is because- GW has made a lot of efforts to get new releases, air quotes, to stores by Friday of, you know, the appropriate week. 
so that they will always have the new releases to sell because, you know, that's the thing that propels the hobby propels sales is new releases. So if they had just put it out as like a restock, restocks are taking two to three weeks ish right now. Um, if, if it's even in stock, like you could put in stores, put in a, a restock order. It's taking roughly two to three weeks. And that isn't even guaranteed you're going to get hundred percent fill right now because, you know, reasons, COVID stuff. Um, so the fact that they made it a new release designation is even more important because he will be on the shelf at the same time as his rules. In so the basically it's how they game their fulfillment system to put it through. Yeah. I get it. So, you know, two, two very good uh, things happening uh, right there in regards to Bellacore this week. So very, very cool to see for sure. Um, there's obviously going to be a preview this weekend. It's probably going to be more centered around 40K. Might be some big surprises in there. I think there was the Inquisition symbol was one of the previews today or yesterday. I don't know. Time has no meaning sometimes to me. And uh, that's a good sign because we've seen a lot of uh, cool kind of imperial looking preview uh, rumor engines over the past couple of months. So, um, and, you know, we've talked about this already. Orcs are poised to get potentially a whole lot of uh, miniatures. Uh, I would expect the Beast Nagus box will go on pre-order right around the 15th. And uh, and then, of course, that will probably come out the following week from what it, what it sounded like. And that'll be the, the early access to the Orc Codex uh, for 40K. But I'm sure, you know, a lot of content creators and stuff will have it out there and breaking, breaking it all down um, very, very soon. So there's a good chance that we have the preview on Saturday and the announcement of some of the, you know, at least the Beast Naga box going on pre-order um, basically the next day on Sunday. Yeah, that 17th. Will, yeah, for the, for the 17th. Yep. I think the 15th is on a Thursday this, mm-hmm. this uh, next week. Um, some, more good, uh, some more good news by GW is um, they put out a FAQ for Sigmar, which, by the way, the General's Handbook, which is the Age of Sigmar equivalent of uh, the um, chapter proof book for Sigmar. Dude, it's sweet. It's got, it's hardcover. It's spiral bound. You also love their layout. I guess like that's something you keep going on about. There's, there's the little tabs. graphs and there's, shit. There's no, there's cardboard tabs in this thing. So you, you don't have to do anything. You literally open it up. It's all tabbed. It's pre-tabbed. Did like, you do anything boot. to it though? You don't have to. Do, I, I mean, mean, did you? No. Yeah. Well, I mean, I put in some of the rules that are technically missing, like the the core battalion rules and stuff. Like with a sharpie, or like, did you print something elaborate? And I printed something elaborate because I'm ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was getting. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't need to. Um, it, but you did. Oh, there's there's um, there's tokens. It comes with a sheet of punch out tokens that you can put them back into the insert, and the insert fits inside of. Uh, the general's handbook. I'm not going to lie. It's, that's pretty hype. Like I'm trying to joke on this thing, but that's they, dude. It reminds me of this coffee table book. I bought one time years ago. I don't even know where it was like a pirate book. Okay. Like a big, like looked all like leathery and like gangster. And like it had little pockets and like gold was in it. And like a compass built in. Literally it was just a flip book of like cool pictures of like pirate ships from the, and like, but it like had those little things. Like we could spin it around and there was like a secret compartment and like the blooms would fall out. It was the <laughs> most inane, utterly unnecessary thing I had that I just like cherished because of all these little things it could do. And you're kind of basically telling me that the general's handbook is that coffee table item that I used to own for my past, but with functionality attached to it. Well, if all goes well, we'll see a, we'll see a 40 K version of it when they switch over the rules Fuck. to have all the, uh, <laughs> I'm going to need to so just what? give it, just give it a year or, or, or so, uh, give or take, but it's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty neat book. Um, you know, Sigmar, the Sigmar rules are are pretty solid. A lot of folks, you know, are really liking the the new rule set. Um, so if you haven't checked out Sigmar and you're like, I don't know about Sigmar, definitely give it a try. It still has a double turn, but it's 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 a lot more engaging. They made it a lot more engaging, and I have a I have a really high hope for um, when they port a lot of this stuff. Because remember, Sigmar is kind of like a almost like a beta for 40k sometimes. And 40K sometimes is a beta for Sigmar. Like they took a lot of the ninth edition stuff and kind of put it into Sigmar. And now we have this weird Sigmar is kind of an amalgam of ninth edition and like new concepts. So it's almost like some of that stuff is going to port over into the next edition of 40K. 
And I'm really hopeful for that because it, it seems I've seen a couple of the games and I've listened to uh, a lot of folks talking about it and a lot of things, um, you know, reading up the rules and everything. And it, it, it seems more, way more engaging than 40 K is right now. So very hopeful for that because at the end of the day, you just want to have fun when you're playing your games. And one of the things, you know, I've been playing a lot of Marvel Crisis Protocol lately. And, you know, anybody, ask anybody that plays more than a couple of games of Marvel Crisis Protocol. Like, every game is so engaging. You can be down. You can, like, you win by getting 16 points. You can play a game where you lost. You were at two and they were at 16. And you'd be like, dude, I that was the best game ever. I had, I until I looked at the scoreboard and I was like, oh, crap. Like, I was having a blast. It was super fun. And Sigmar is kind of like that. And I would love to see 40K like that for sure. Um, it would just be basically the best, <laughs> like straight up. Uh, trying to get through all this stuff here. I know a lot of people are kind of down on Curse City. You know, I kind of came and went. There's a bunch of drama, whatever. But in Sigmar, they put out an FAQ, which was really cool, where you can take Radicar's Court. And instead of fielding it as this one big like amalgam of dudes, you can actually split them up and play all the characters now separately. And, what does amalgam um, mean? Clusterfuck. Yeah, big grouping of a bunch of different things. Thank you. Continue, Rap. <laughs> uh, so you can play them as separately as characters in a Soul Blight vampire, a Soul Blight graveyard uh, army. It was kind of cool to see as well. And then they announced their newest uh, promotion for Age of Sigmar. You can go into a local games, games workshop store. And if you spend hundred dollars, you get Stormcast coin, but and you can also get a free Stormcast mini, which a lot of people are converting that mini if you haven't seen them to be true scale Space Marines because they're they're a little bit more. It's the the Vindicators, I think they're called the Greco Roman looking ones. Um, so they got a spear and a shield, but they kind of look like Thunder Warriors if, with little work, and they definitely are a, a, a very different scale than Primaris. So if you wanted to cover one up to, you know, Space Marine, just have some fun. Go to your local store and get a get a free Stormcast and be like, yeah, then just take it home and pop all the things off and redo it however you want. Because <laughs> there's been some people converting them online and they look pretty dope. Uh, some other stuff I think we should talk about is the... Uh, Creature Caster is coming out with a new release for their uh, Malefica Demons line. It's called the Trickster. It comes in two different versions, mounted and unmounted. Uh, so it's a Trickster riding what they call a Witness, which looks like kind of like a Lovecraftian um, be beholder. And the Trickster itself has like six legs and like two arms. It's super creepy. And it's just like everything Creature Caster. It's very neat looking. I was kind of impressed by it. I was like, this guy's so cute. And he's just like, has his little big eye. And like, boink. Kind of like a Lovecraftian. Uh, who's that dude from Monsters, Inc.? The little green dude, Mike Wazowski. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, it's like the it's coolest a Lovecraftian thing version of that dude. Yeah. <laughs> he's pretty dope. Um, so that's kind of all of the big stuff. I did want to mention that. Uh, Atomic Mass Games put out a little bit of a preview. I talked about Marvel, Marvel Crisis Protocol. Probably too much and nobody cares, but I like it. So I don't have a problem with it. it. It's a lot more interesting than your Titanic is, Tart. <laughs> oh, wow. There's been, there's been about zero new stuff on Titanic is front, unfortunately. Like I haven't, once, I haven't once came down on you for talking about Crisis Protocol. I haven't once like pulled out the chess clock on you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had a lengthy and girthy discussion in the pre-show about Galactus wearing a banana hammock. And Rob was like really adamant about wanting that model. He was so taking notes and shit, dude. He's like, passionate dude. about it. Some of those statements are true. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let y'all figure out what you want. Um, but on the Galactus scale of things, they might have just previewed Dormammu for Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, there was a site in Poland that looks like they might have accidentally leaked the fact that it's going to be a large a large figure in a counter. Uh, it's going to have a model of the Nexus, which is probably what's up on Atomic Mass Games' Twitter right now. And uh, Dormammu will, will come out uh, with that. It's going to be like supposedly like $83 kit. Pretty cool because it's the first big um, 
character for Marvel Crisis Protocol. The, you, the so, did you put a picture of that in Discord? I have not. Anybody listening to this podcast and they drive to work, there's a Discord channel that we sometimes try to remember to put things in. Some sometimes you'll find a Every link long war, to the Long War Discord channel. Um, yeah, I'll put it. I'll put it in live chat so anybody that's uh, that's watching can. But I cannot get in there right now, unfortunately. Um, so that looks pretty cool. Also, they did some pictures, just like some what do you call it? Static, static shots of like X Force, and then they did one of the X Men, and in the background off in the distance behind like some of the, the cars that you guys have seen, probably the train pieces from Marvel crisis protocol behind, behind a little bush and in front of some trees. It's what it looks, looks to be a, uh, a potential plastic model of the blackbird, the X plane, mm. which would be pretty neat to see even if it's just a train kit, like, is it swept wing? Is it inverted wing? You know, which, which version of the Blackbird? Why are you so into planes and you refuse to get on them? Oh, no, I'll, I have no problems flying if I'm the pilot. Can you fly? Yeah, you don't you know how to pilot planes. planes. <laughs> See, that's selfish, because if you were flying, everybody else would feel how you feel, but they would have a rational reason I'm to not do gonna, so. I, I would because a man fly, who does not know how to fly a plane is behind the wheel. That doesn't even make sense. Why would I do that? <laughs> Mike, do planes have wheels that you that you are in the cockpit? So how that is that is is that still apply like behind the wheel? Or is there some other like Air Force yoke. term we use there? A yoke. But do do is that like a is that like lexicon like behind a yoke? Do you guys I say that? I don't know. I wasn't a pilot. I wanted to be a pilot, but they had better things for me to do. They were like, "Nah, you you look like a mushroom. You're better underground." <laughs> bye oh, bye. Sorry. I was just hoping they'd say something like, you know, deep in the stick or something cool like that. Oh. Deep in the stick. <laughs> you're just, you're just in the pipe five shit. by five. Yeah. You're just making shit up. No, I would totally. Uh, I think if I was a pilot, I, I would have no problems. Obviously, I would not pilot a plane unless I was qualified to do so. You silly. <laughs> but so you, yeah. you're just telling me it's it's safe for highly qualified trained individuals right. to fly. He's saying it's not safe for anyone. Don't fucking fly is what he's saying. That's his PSA. Planes are fine. <laughs> yesterday we talked yesterday I had a talk with, nope. with with Rob and he was talking about buying a like an RV so that he can drive places more comfortably because he refuses to fly so much. So we want to yeah, call I didn't we, realize how much those things cost. Yeah, <laughs> like a tour bus? Expensive. Yeah. yeah like yeah. a like a road coach like a you know, a like spiky a spiky have. bus. Yeah. Yeah. Seem to be vandalized everywhere. Oh yeah, dicks all over it, dude. Dicks, so many dicks. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd be awesome to have like a spiky bus coming to a town near you. Come I don't on. know. Maybe it's in the cards. I just I okay. wouldn't mind, you know, driving out to you know some West Coast events for doing a little drive around just a couple weeks, seeing people. You know, we could run like a painting competition for which which dick mural is the is the most realistic and veiny. Like I don't know, it might get it might get kind of expensive if this thing has to get repainted, and then and like I have to like sit down with my my State Farm guy and be like, all right, look, I need extra coverage for like vandalism, and he's like, why? And I was like, because there's gonna be a lot of dicks, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like there's gonna be some asshole every time I go somewhere. I guess they'd have to figure it out, but um, there's all those campgrounds and stuff, you know, for like. RVs and things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now I know why my dad was always like, yeah, I'm just don't expect an inheritance. I'm just going to buy one of those uh, motor coaches. And I didn't, I, I just, I didn't dawn on me at the time that, that he wasn't joking. <laughs> that because I sunk all of our money into this thing. <laughs> know that they were that effing expensive. Yeah. I was like, holy cow, dude. I mean, I, it makes sense. Like, and that's not even the cost of like, you know, you got to, Sounds like sounds like, like boat ownership. Well, yeah, because you need a slip. Like when you get something that big, like Wait, you gotta have a concrete pad to put it on. Hold on, slip. Have a Hold on, go back to that. So when we boat, we can get in the slip. Yeah, that's that's vernacular. That's 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 yeah. a lingo. But I yeah. can't say get deep in the stick on a plane. I mean, you can say whatever you want. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. I'm sure there is some like Florida swamp pilots that definitely use stuff like that. 
yeah what are your what are your fan what do your gator people say they're not qualified to drive boats and shit. <laughs> 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 the only the only airboats i've ever been on were like what the native reservations were like qualified natives piloting them maybe i should look at leasing one or like uh renting one of those things well, you can go, like, van life with, like, a, you know, the conversion van that's all kitted out with everything. That's got oh, a maybe. cheaper. Oh, yeah, that's no, not I a full know. RV, but it's, like, you know, there's there's some pretty sweet, like, uh, van conversions that people have done that oh. have, like, a room back there. Oh, and then we can YouTube it like all those other channels do. Throw some that's solar yeah, panels there's, on there's, the top um, for the apocalypse. Like, it's it like Tom Green. He does, like his like whole like podcast out of a, like a sprinter van that he's converted and just drives around the country. Oh yeah. The sprinter vans are pretty modular. You can do yeah. all sorts of stuff. Mm-hmm. I see, I see those around like just parked at like the Walmart parking lots at the end. Yeah. There's, you know, there's people sleeping in them. Yeah. It's like there's a whole economy around like pimping those out to be basically like a little miniature RV. So this, we're hmm. getting one step closer to our blues brothers tournament. <laughs> oh uh, yes. Video. As soon as Rob gets this van figured out, he's gonna have to come to all of our states and pick us up and then drive. Got it. It's got to be affordable. Yeah. Long war road show. Your skills are needed for a job. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Cask conversion, man. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Sorry, I went deep on that. I apologize. I know it took us down that path. <laughs> Take full responsibility. It was legit. Uh, We're, I mean, we like our tangents. Yeah, we're very tangential here. Well, that's uh, that's basically all the all the new release stuff I'm in news I'm tracking uh, this week. So, oh, I did want to mention too. It sounds like I've been getting a lot of reports. Uh, a lot of the like, um, what is it? Designations of things being out of stock or temporarily out of stock or sold out, like on GW site and Forge World. Um, a lot of people have sent me messages, which I can't, you know, re- repost specifically, but the gist of it is that apparently Forge World is going through a repackaging, which isn't unheard of because they did it a few a few years back. Like they started white box and things. They started putting things in, in baggies and clam packs, making it, you know, easier for retail uh, mm-hmm. to put on the shelf, you know, at their cafe stores and also at like conventions and stuff. Cause you know, that's, just putting things on racks and being able to roll it in and roll it out and have people touch the stuff and put it back instead of like little baggies behind the, behind the, the tables is, uh, you know, you're going to sell more stuff. It's going to, it's just going to work better. Um, so that it could be something like that. Like maybe they're just changing their look, changing their packaging, but either way, you know, if you were like, I in some high expensive item, perhaps on forge rolled, that you're like, I want this thing. It says it's sold out. It may be coming back. Like just, you know, give it some time. Things are coming, going on stock, coming back. You know, you might get lucky um, or it may just go away forever. You know, like who knows? But <laughs> uh, I wouldn't make any big, big dollar purchases right now just because there might be a feel like on the secondary market, because you think you might not be able to get it from GW um, because a lot of stuff is just still in flux right now. Mm-hmm. So I would give it some time, you know. Um, yeah, they've done that before. That's good advice. Hold off. Don't make any crazy purchases on the third party scene. The second market could just be putting like, it in a new box. <laughs> yeah. And there it is. So just uh, just pump the brakes. Just pump the brakes. That's all you got to do. That's all I got, guys. Okay. All right. Mike Haspel, the legendary Haspel's Corner. Yeah, and this one is very bittersweet for me. Uh, it is, I have good news and bad news. The good news is I just got brought on board. Um, I can't really describe it. I can't give any details, but uh, it's a fairly big project for Black Library. Um, and so... Because of that, I'm going to have to step back from the podcast a bit. And it's like, it's not, you know, but I want to cut rumors off. So it's not like they're telling me that I can't 
it's just a prudence thing. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just trying to like just cover bases and everything like that. So I probably will not be a regular on the podcast anymore. I'll still come back on as a guest uh, when I can and when there's stuff that's that's pertinent to cover. But it's like I have I, I have a lot of information that like one potential slip up, you know what I mean, could get me in a lot of hot water. So <laughs> I'm just kind of like uh, I probably shouldn't be on like you know big public venue and everything talking about talking about this stuff all the time um because then i could just be you know indirect violation of things you've signed exactly exactly because because we could be talking about something that's really cool and then i just get into the moment and i'm like oh did you know wolverine is coming back to the mcu oh my god what have i done <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> well, let's don't want to pull a tom Holland. <laughs> yep <laughs> so so i'm just kind of like yeah i'm it's probably best to like step away for a bit and then uh when some cool stuff comes on you know like kill team or something that i'm really into uh definitely be be back on titanicus yeah absolutely. Uh, definitely be back on more in a guest capacity and everything um but this is a really really big deal and that's all i can really tell you guys it it's killing me by the way it's killing me because <laughs> i'm just like i wish i could tell you guys wait is wolverine coming to the, to the mcu yes that is a fact well, uh he's actually coming to galactus's uh, banana hammock <laughs> banana hammock there's a party in Galactus's pants and you're all invited. Yeah. <laughs> pants party. <laughs> you're invited to the pants party. Well, but I mean, yeah, that's basically my Haspel's corner. It's, it's a downer, but it's a good thing too. So it's just, I, I'm just very conscious about trying to like watch my butt. <laughs> no, it makes sense, man. Like you'd be working your ass off like mm-hmm. for years. Mm-hmm. So you just gotta play, your, gotta play your cards right, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and Mike Haspel has gone on self imposed uh, media breaks before for, yeah. Like, this is not the first time, guys, and it won't be the last time. Mike Haspel is still here. Yep. There was like a solid, like, half a year one time where you had to step off for when you were writing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and ultimately that went nowhere it was so sad it was like, this one is going somewhere it's even more this one's going somewhere for sure so yeah. I don't want to mess it up could be pants could not be pants <laughs> definitely going to pants <laughs> yep That's Mike what the party is. has gone flat <laughs> yep that would be an inside joke for years to come Um. so yeah you know we'll be doing a three man show uh, here and there with some possible guests you know rotating out in the future as we move forward congratulations to Mike Haspel the legendary author Absolutely. of Graveyard Shift and yep. new titles to come to be announced new soon. titles to come soon <laughs> I can't wait to update your title like Mike Haspel the legendary author of Graveyard Shift Wolverine's return to the MCU Galactus has been banana hammock banana hammock uh, and pants. heavyweight champion of the world uh, <laughs> like all the things. King of the Andals and the First Men. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> nice bringing it back to Game of Thrones. That's like ne- that's like meme necromancy at this point. <laughs> <laughs> that is. <laughs> it is. Well, then let's talk about some works. Uh, my cast were recently playing the play against them, so I'll be able to weigh in on this conversation, mm-hmm. uh, which is a rehash of a conversation. That Wyatt and I had earlier today, as many times you hear us say things like, we talked about it on tactics. We talked about it on tactics. Uh, we have a tactics discussion group via my Patreon page that Wyatt has uh, kind of like for free volunteer to like make it good for me for like the last <laughs> year. Uh, so we can have conversations. And today we talked about orcs and uh, kind of an interesting way of thinking about them and uh, why it was lamenting on uh, he thinks that you know what what points they're going to be so oh yeah I just like that's that's mm. my 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 what is it Rob the, the gluten free gut check mm-hmm. is that Games Workshop is going to make works 10 points a boy how much are they now seven they're eight they're eight points hmm. they're currently eight so, points so here's what they're they're giving us a new dex right so we're going to get you know Either a small or a large revamp of clan cultures, 
right? We're going to get um, new stratagems. We're going to get faction secondaries. We're going to get new warlord traits, relics. Um, we're getting the whole new beast nagas. And then based on what we've been seeing, there's there's probably going to be like a pretty good grip of new units as well in this codex. But, you know, first and foremost, they're giving them T5. Mm-hmm. And they're also giving them AP on their choppas, yep. finally. And as we know, right, like, how Games Workshop sometimes does not properly value stats. Um, I definitely think that like because they're giving them T5 and they're giving them AP on Choppas and possibly AP on Shooters too. We don't know yet, but like I feel like they're gonna they're gonna make them 10 points a pot. And mm-hmm. because you can't have a unit of five, they have to start at a unit 10. It's gonna be a hundred points. Which lines up with like, you know, for a long time they've been saying things like expect things to go up 20%. Expect things to go 20%, you know, like shit like that. Like, and it's been pretty close across the board with some exceptions. Uh, But especially when they give you stuff, like, so they're giving them more toughness and more DPS. So with the data we already have on this, like, kind of, you know, 20% kind of promise they've been, you know, telling us since, you know, the indexes and everything. And, you know, when they, 10 points make sense, you know, in their mind. Yeah. uh, so 100 points for 10 orcs in this in this uh, theory, which I think I think why it's right. I think they're going to be I think that that's exactly what's going to happen. But luckily, those are things that do get changed. Like you see, those are the adjustments we get on those spreadsheets all the time from GW. Put adjustments, mm-hmm. you know, things go up, they go down, they go up. And so I think they're going to come out day one, 10 points, like why it says. And uh, here's why that's inappropriate, <laughs> which is uh, why they will get dropped back down to eight. They should remain at eight with the buffs is in my opinion as an objective game analysis right mm-hmm. and so we use a little instinct math right we do this all the time in the podcast we you know i do that with mike when we were figured out land speeders remember mm-hmm. we're just like taking we compare one thing to another thing and kind of you know in the way i talked you into a land speeder squadron of og land speeders Versus and not the, the new storm speeder, right? Yeah, it was like do, mm-hmm. with all these comparisons, like this is how many wounds. So like, you know, you, I just, I like to compare units that already exist in the game system to see how things stack up. But this goes all the way back to when the buggies first dropped. Um, you know, we, how many points is uh, is the buggy that has all the bullets? Like 160 points or some shit, or 150 points or some shit? Like we basically were like, before we even knew the points, we just compared it to a, a Space Marine Razorback with an assault cannon. We're like, okay, so we know how many points a Razorback is, what its armor value is, how far it moves, how many whole, how many wounds it has, how many bullets it has, what it hits at. So we kind of understand the market value of a unit like this. And so anytime a buggy is kind of similarly positioned in like what it is, and it comes in way over those points and doesn't do what that thing does, you, that's where you kind of see the failing. So that's actually the conversation we had about attack bikes, remember? Attack bikes and, and mm-hmm. uh, haulers. You know, so here is intercessors are 100 points, right, Wyatt? Yes. Five intercessors, 100 points. Ten oak boys are going to be 100 points in this analogy, which we think is a fact. Ten wounds for five intercessors? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ten orcs, ten wounds. So, the, so we have the same wound defense okay orc has a six up save space marine has a three up save that's like what, four times worse like it's, it's <laughs> you know what i mean it's like mm-hmm. it's 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 bad mm-hmm. uh it, you know it's you go from a uh 66 percent chance uh to uh to to not be wounded to what like what is what's the math on what how do you how do you f- extrapolate What's a one in six percentage wise? Like 17, oh, 17 or 18. No, it's 13%. So 13%? Yeah. So, or 16, hold on. So like literally 200% more likely to die, <laughs> right? 16.6%. Yeah. Or some shit like Rounded that. Rounded up, so like 17-ish. So, percent. okay, we have the same wounds, but we are twice as easy to kill. But... But we have our 10 wounds spread out over 10 bodies, which does give us a degree of defense we have to consider, right? Because that means multi-damage weapons are not are not functional against us, a kind of a waste, 
right? But it does mean that like all your one damage weapons are useful against this. Then that's when it enters the toughness five equation, right? That's the first break point. So all the guns that are one damage, right, are typically going to be affected by the new toughness break point. So you got to give them a defense buff there, right? Now, obviously, something that would wound you on fours that now wounds you on fives, that's a doubling, right? So in that category of weaponry, they're twice as hard to wound, which kind of like seems like it undoes half of the uh, armor save element, but it doesn't. Yeah, just like just the basic stat line break point is there, right? But mm-hmm. the problem is not that, you know, they're going to have trouble wounding them. It's that with even the most basic synergies with some of the more dominant factions, right? Like Canicum, Sisters of Battle, Dark Eldar, Space Marines, like Death Guard, list goes on, right? Um, they're like, okay, cool, we don't care because we have like ways to basically minimize the math on hits and wounds and anything with AP it just kills boys and drugs. Yeah. Don't have enough to save. So that's why we can't use what well, Wyatt said. That's why we can't use the like the seemingly doubling of difficulty to hurt them as a, as a way to undo half of their defense problem. I would give them a, a 50%. Like I would say like maybe that gives them 50% back in the positive category because with all that all those listed reasons and other strike six seven and eight guns exist right so okay maybe they're not twice as easy to kill maybe they're 150 percent as easy to kill right um so wounds are spread out they're a little tougher um but as far as survivability goes they are not equal like they're c- clearly not equal to a hundred points in intercessors in, in difficulty to dislodge, right? Not to mention a 10 man squad has other problems, right? Coherency issues, like the way you have to always be within an, you to, So there's a whole other set of problems there. And so then they're slower by an inch walking wise. So just moving around, doing things in the backfield, they have less ability to move. Uh, and But DPS is kind of like where it gets kind of equal. So like a shoot a boy squad, if they have guns, 10 of them have guns, even though they hit on fives, um, it's comparable, but not, but not, but like, you know, it's still like half as good. Uh, in close combat, they shine though, right? They absolutely outclass the intercessors as long as they're not fighting intercessors, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like in a, in a vacuum with their base level of attacks, how many attacks they get for their choppa and the fact that it's got a built in minus one. They're cool. They're, they do more. They fuck harder. A little harder in close combat. But, like, you're not taking intercessors for f- close combat. You're taking them because they fuck you up from 30 inches away. So, this is how you got to think about this. They're likely to be 10 points a model. They are not appropriate at 10 points a model. Like, Toughness 5 doesn't make them appropriate. Doesn't make them equal to a 2 wound 3 up save model. Not even close. So, like, it would have been more... I mean... They could have been toughness three, but give them a five up and vulnerable. Now we're talking. I'd pay 10 points for that. That's a completely or different give them two wounds. Or just give them straight two wounds. I actually yeah. think they should have. I'm down to give an orc boy. A t- I'm down to give a 10 point orc boy, Mike Haspel, literally three wounds, no armor save. Mm. Toughness four. Because to me, that's real DPS. It's still super easy to hurt them, and it's narrative as fuck. It's only well, as, tough, as toughness four. You toughness four, yeah. Mm-hmm. Toughness four, three wounds, no save of any type. Literally, you, you're spraying them down with bolters. They never save. Blood's flying off of them. Arms are hitting the ground, and they're still coming at you. So it's annoying that you have to put more bullets on them. But then now you're gonna have to like put plasma guns at them, hit them with you know like a, an air tank hunter gun. Like mm-hmm. I think that would have been a sicker approach because toughness isn't what it used to be. For example, tell us about your story. You just play some orcs. Tell us, tell us five orcs. And you- yeah, I thought it was kind of an issue, though, because because normally stuff that would wound on fours now wounds on fives. So I had to swap out one of the one of the things I had in there was a Thunderfire Cannon, right? Uh, Thunderfire Cannon is strength four now. You know, uh, it got nerfed a little bit, but that made a big deal going against orcs. It was just like, because even though it's blast, and I was maxing out all my hits. It didn't matter. It was just like that wounding on fives instead of fours was a dramatic decrease of wounds that I was doing. Um, 
it, so toughness five orcs like kind of hurt because I was just like, wow, you know, this is stuff that I expected to, to just, you know, start pulling these boys off the table and they're, they're not going off the table. But we're not so, dying. We're not dying, right. boss. So you already made adjustments though. Like we talked I about did. in the pre-gun show. I did. Right. You just so literally, instead you just of literally, the yeah. thunder fire cannon, I took a whirlwind, which is strength six, now wounds on threes. So, uh, so you so, math hammered yeah. it. Mitigated so, the problem, you know. Yeah. Uh, but so if you've you, got an old list, don't don't think that toughness five works or right, right. And the reason that I say like T five isn't that big a deal is because they told us that like a month ago or longer, like almost maybe two months ago when when they show off that new box set and talk about that, like it's so like, uh, yeah, you know, like two months. So anybody with any gray matter between their ears has been like, okay, well. T5 works is, is coming. It's an inevitability. So mm -hmm. I better be ready to deal with it. So like, unless there's just like some kind of like earth shattering rework that comes no, around no, with this but codex, it was, it's just like, we're going to show up and people are being like, oh yeah, we've been ready for T5 works for like for, two for months. A while. Yeah. And they're just going to burn. You know, the, I mean, that's see, and that's a big problem. That's why we go back to the, the math of it. Right. They're going to get the, their, their GW always thinks toughness is the heat. Right. And they think they're giving orcs what they need to be. And I, if, but if they stay eight points, right, if they stay eight points, we're talking. Yeah. If, G, if GW does this, like that aggressively, like they're eight points and they have more toughness and they hit harder, we don't have to talk about it because that's ultimately what the points are going to have to go because 10 points is highly inappropriate. It's mm -hmm. going to be seen on the table over and over again. Um, even like 30 boys mashed together in a big unit has a lot of problems these days, right? It's harder to move them around. They don't Congo line the way they used to. They don't cover the board the way they used to have to. You constantly have to think about the placement of coherency. It's not the same type of unit it used to be, right? Now, obviously, I, you know, I'm, I'm going kind of hard when I say things like orcs, three wounds. Um, what we need is eliteness. We need orcs to have a feeling that is not just we have a bunch of guys that suck, that sometimes, you know, hurt people. That's an old self-fulfilling prophecy of the orc codex we need stuff that feels strong that feels like it, when, when something hits it you should just just vanish right mm -hmm. so wounds is the answer there but you know what maybe boys are going to be relegated to a different role in the codex and they want these two right if we can take a page out of the uh, dark eldar codex the death guard codex there's people running a lot of similar units in different fashion in different ways right because you're not as why it says not spoiled for choice like Mm -hmm. I mean, you go crazy there. So, if these if these buggies suddenly are pointed correctly, if if Gorkanox, like something Wyatt said earlier, if they're they, if if the Gork and Morkanot are dope, right? Like if um, Gretchen are yeah. de-incentivized because they don't can't do actions and their and stuff like that, like you know, you have a mix of cool functional stuff that's fast that can get in your face, then suddenly Orc boys, you you, you know, that might be just like the Chaos Codex, the Chaos Cultus of the Codex. Right, mm -hmm. you just, you have ten, you have a bunch of units of ten of them doing their thing, but you're not like necessarily jamming them all together in one unit every, in every game, you know. Oh, expand upon that. What do you think? I mean, I'd like to see that too, right? Like that's what we've seen this pattern with um, Dark Eldar Sisters, Admech, uh, even Death Guard to an extent. Like you're kind of spoiled for choice, where it's just like everything's good. I want to take everything, you know. Um, and that's a good feeling to have where it's like, when you put a list together, you're like, this unit's good. This unit's good. This unit's good. Like, I feel good about this, you know? Um, and like the, the word on the street is that like these codexes were all like play tested and kind of written within the same batch. Uh, so like dark Eldar, um, ad mech sisters of battle works thousand sons and gray knights were all like kind of written in a, like a, a grip. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's like, cool. That's positive thinking. I like, I like that. Um, and I, I do think that like making the orcs a little bit more elite could work, but it would just have to be like, it would have to be incentivized in some way. Like, what do you, like if, if boys suck and you don't want me to take 300 boys, right. You, you want me to diversify my army choices into these other units, like the buggies and the new beast snaggas and maybe like some of the other stuff we haven't seen yet or like bone breakers or burning boys, flash kits, like all that type of stuff. Right. Like you got to make them cool. You got to make them good. You can't have like a scratch at be 110 points. 
and you can't have like a boosted blasta be in 90 points. When Admech has like Balistari that are 65 points, have the core keyword, yeah. and through basic army list synergies without spending resources, it doesn't miss. It make it, it to where they always hit, always wound, mm-hmm. like always does, you know, eight damage at yeah. minimum. Minimum. Right. And all of our buggies, they only got like 10, 12 wounds. So it's like every time a Balistari looks at my scrap check, it's going to kill one. It's almost guaranteed. Right. For um, 65 points. Yeah. For 65 points. And you can take like huge units of them, you know, because they're not just a one and done the way that some of our vehicles are. Um, things like flash kits, like flash kits have been overcosted for a while. And they're one of the best shooting units in the orc army. Like they're super cool. You can have Captain Badruck with them doing your free brooder business. But they're a strength six, minus two, two damage gun at 24 inches. And where other factions can just spend two CP to shoot twice, you have to like roll and then hope you roll a six, right? So it's super swingy. So like another one of those, all because they hit on fours, right? Um, things like Burna Boys, like they have flamers, but they're only D3 shots instead of D6 shots. Like there's no reason that should be the case. They should all be D6 shots. You know, and then don't increase the point cost for giving them D six shots. Yeah, things like that. Yeah, no, that's that's really what it comes down to, man. Make things exciting, just like you did with the Dark Elder, just like you did with the Admech. Make things do hard, like make things hurt. Like, I, like I want, I want the orcs. I want if you do have a thirty man unit of orcs, that is ultimately, you know, not that easy to dislodge because there's thirty bodies in one unit. When that thing touches something, I want it to be a threat. Right, I want you to be able to like a you know you're shooting my orcs up, dude. You're dying, but man, when I get to you, mm, like for real, this time, not like how we all pretend, you know? Yeah, because in like every instance that orcs are in like the universe, right? It's like the whole point is to stop the orcs from getting inside the walls, because if they get past the walls, we're all fucked. Like they know that. Like orcs are a problem in the 40k universe right but then like you see orcs at an event and unless or just casual play too right like unless that person has like 18 smasher guns you're just like oh this is a gimme like orcs are not scary right and this goes this this goes way back to something that we talked about at the start of ninth edition where it's like every single faction should be respectable when you see them across the table from you whether it be at the most casual level or at the highest level of competition if i'm playing against Necrons, if I'm playing against Tyranids, if I'm playing against Space Marines or Sisters of Battle, whatever, right? I should basically be, I should have to respect that faction for its strengths and weaknesses, not be like, oh, I'm playing Orcs next round. This is like GG. Game's going to be done in 30 minutes. I'm going to go get a beer. Like, because then, like, you also have to think about the other person, right? Who's probably put a ton of time and love into that Orc army. And it's just like, they don't they don't want to get like stomped at every game that they play just because they refuse to like buy 18 smasher guns and have like 300 grots on the table um like that's not fun for anybody yeah. smash you know? guns okay i promise you smash guns is gonna be de-incentivized Gretchen's yeah and i guarantee you like nobody is actually buying 18 smasher guns from gw they're buying like one smasher gun using all of the bits to kit bash into six different smasher guns and then like they're buying some third party ones or they might be just like totally scratch building them. Like Games Workshop is not getting their money for 18 full smash gun kits. Like that's not happening, <laughs> you know? So it's like, let us like, let commandos be good. Let knobs be good. Let, you know, mecha armor knobs oh, be good. Yeah. Let our characters have the most basic of synergies that other factions have, right? Like there's no reason that a war boss should not give reroll hit rolls a one to or like to core units like there's no reason that shouldn't be the case yeah. right or kenny brought up a cool thing that's thematic where it's like instead of him giving out an aura reroll, tell him to shout an order at a unit like hey look at that rhino boys go fuck it up you know and then yeah, like, do like the inversion you know, of it like units within mm-hmm. six inches of that order when firing at that unit get a bonus rather than like the chapter master primark reroll aura buff kind of thing you know <laughs> like because we were, we were kind of looking at our HQ choices. Like there's only two, two um, HQs that give any type of like rerolls and it's Gasgol Thraka. And it's only, it's only for golf boys. Right. And it's reroll hit rolls of one in the melee phase and captain bad rock. And it's only for flash kits units. So like, there's like, 
the, the HQs barely do anything that isn't their own like fight phase, basically. Yeah, but I mean, I've, I mean, the overhaul of like the Jukari and the Admech and the Death Guard gives me hope because a big, another big theme we've seen here is some type of escalating or modifiable chart that kind of exists outside the game, right? Power from pain, the contagions, the catacles, and all these other little things you can kind of select throughout the game. Uh, to me, that's a primary opportunity to apply some of these concepts. And I, I'm, and also, like, we know Grey Knights have, have that too at the Tides. That's been something GW's been working on for a while, right? If they'll get a new thing that kind of changes the way our game a little bit, and they're, and then they'll kind of play test it a little bit, and they'll be like, yeah, this is what we need. And I think that's what's happening right now. And I'm pretty sure the wall is going to be like something like that. Like something like Wyatt mentioned, like the blood tithe, like corn shit, or like the tally man, some type of thing, maybe some chart of th- things you have to do or just things that occur as you get closer and the turn progression occurs. You give us one of those charts, all cultures get this thing, right? That can kind of boost up things. What a sick game mechanic and a way to make orcs hit harder for free as the game goes on or, you know, by doing good things and surviving or maybe accomplishing tasks, maybe every model they kill. I don't fucking know, but I think they're, I think that they're going to do it right. The fact that Iron Striders are 65 points, right? They only just now raised up attack bikes a little bit. You know, I think GW's figured it out. You know, I think that they've acknowledged some of the problems with some of the hardware and the elite and the the more elite units. At least I'm hopeful. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Like overall, I'm I'm positive uh, feeling about the uh, the upcoming stuff. I mean, it's just like I mean, I'm I'm like that with works all the time. Right. Like the last time we built an orc army, you know, the old Fury Road list, we were hyped for it. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I didn't like do as well at LVO as I had hoped, but I still broke even with it. Right. So it wasn't like a disaster. Um, and I just have, I have so much fun with orcs. Like um, if, if like Space Marines didn't exist, like if Ultramarines didn't exist, like orcs would be by far my favorite thing in 40K. And we're just now getting to a point where I can get past the like, old busted model stuff because we're finally getting new orc boy kits. We're getting these new things like the beast nagas, like um, more kits on the way, like getting a war boss and mega armor again, which they, they took away and now they're giving back. So <laughs> like, mm, what, you know, we'll see like, uh, well, like, yeah, I'm, I'm positive, like about the whole thing. So like, I'm excited for it. It's, it's pretty cool. Like I'm working on orcs right now, getting ready for everything. So I'm excited. Uh, I don't think they're going to make the orcs suck at all. I mean, every every thing that's come out with the, um, you know, exception of a few exploits, you know, Admex, obviously very strong right now. Dark Eldo was kind of a scourge there for a while. But that might have been a little gamey. But everything else is it, it seemed to square up pretty well against each other. If they had, you know, ninth, ninth feet ninth. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's going to continue. Uh you know, throughout, throughout the releases here. It looks that way. I mean, this has been one of the most uh, exciting. It's funny. We keep, we almost keep saying that like year after year now, like ever since eighth drop, right? <laughs> I mean, the game has been trending, excited, like exciting, you know, like it's, it's really good. I mean, I feel like it's like the best, I know in six I had major complaints mm-hmm. that like made me not want to play. My complaints on people. ninth, yeah. My complaints on ninth are nitpicks. Yeah, literally. And GW, yeah, I would prefer this rule true. to work that way. But and GW balance is you know, exactly like fixes points that like we get FAQ coverage now, man. Like, I remember fourth edition. Like I remember like it took me a while to warm up to fourth edition. Fourth edition. Mm-hmm. So I had a lot of complaints early on. Then I finally just started playing ball with like the way it worked. And we didn't get no FAQs, bro. We didn't get no. no. And she was just what it was, dude. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's dark ages. And then fifth, <laughs> fifth edition, luckily, was like solid for a long time. You know, mm-hmm. and it was pretty good. We, you know, lasted a long time. Sixth edition hit. You know, it quickest turnover I think in the, in ever. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it was a problem. Mm-hmm. Seventh week has still had so many complaints in seven with reinforcement points and, you know, uh, Death Stars and Formation Blow. I mean, it's just like there's an era. Every one of these additions pretty much had an era. Like even mm-hmm. we go all back to third and we try to think of Cher's thoughts. It's like, yeah, but like Rhino Rush Dog, it's like all we did. Yeah. You know? So it's like, I got none of that right now. Like I'm just like, Shit's awesome. Things kill things. I don't care how cool, how strong the thing you brought is. I have a way to interact with it. Like, I'm with it, man. Mm-hmm. I think orcs are going to be sick. I'm irrationally excited about orcs because they're near and dear. <laughs> yeah. So maybe apologize if I go really hard. Are you going to build? Are you going to re re bring out the Watan clan? I mean, I've I need th- I want three factions that I painted myself. Right. Mm-hmm. One of them has to, it has to be the Watan clan. One of them has to be Xenos. So that means it yeah. obviously has to be the Watan clan. Yes. Nice. I mean, like, Pop Goes the Monkey has Watan clan bits now. Mm-hmm. You know, like, getting new boy kits so you don't have to work with any old busted shit. Like, I'm with it, man. I don't write the rules, man. I just mm. follow the rules. You know what I'm saying? Watan clan. <laughs> it's got to be. I would like to know the parameters of the rules. <laughs> They're elusive, man. All I know is if you follow the rules of drug dealing and apply them to like everything else, it, it always works. <laughs> yeah. It's true. These uh, are the 10 crack commandments. Yep. So, uh, did our best with content today, I think, guys. Little, I think you did good, Kenny. Yeah. Little orc talk. My Caspel's uh, message. So, don't hesitate to find him on Facebook. Send him pictures of your models. Ask him. Yeah, how I'll still really be models. on Discord. I'll still be on everything else, and I'll I'll be back on the podcast too, just mm-hmm. not as a regular. Damn, we're gonna have to find somebody to. Man, where am I gonna hire a guy that like has your like? Can I say what's that word you taught me earlier today? Amalgam. <laughs> now, who has your amalgam of of words? I was, think, I was thinking joy de vivre. Yeah. I je ne sais quoi. Yep. You guys are fucking up my <laughs> I don't know, man. Like there's that there's that one website where you can just pay a dude five dollars to impersonate Matthew McConaughey. So we could just have like Matthew McConaughey oh, we can get a podcast. Celebrity impersonator every week. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, we're going to get my, you heard it here first. Matthew McConaughey coming in next week <laughs> to his Haspel's corner for us. <laughs> but yeah, um, stay up to date with those guys. Hit that Discord server. It's popping. We got new stuff on the horizon. We were working on some stuff today. Rob? Haspel, take us out. <laughs> Do you know what it's like to fall in the mud and get kicked in the head with an iron boot? Of course you don't. No one does. Never happens. Dumb question. Skip it.